Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the GATE 2023. Today we will discuss about all those questions related to the differential equation. We will try to explain you all questions with the help of the shortcut tricks. Myself, Dr. Gar, you can simply follow my telegram channel link for this GATE examinations. Else follow my YouTube channel Dr. Harishkar where you can find various lectures on this GATE mathematics. As you can see here, this is a playlist called as a GATE mathematics where you can find the linear algebra MCQ on the differential equation, all those previous year examination with the help of the shortcut tricks. So let's start with this video. Here the first question is related to this second order differential equation. And you can see on the right hand side there is a from the 0 to 2 the function is my t that means the graph of this function is like here this is from 0 to 2 and after that its function is my constant that's the meaning of this function and clearly say that this function is my continuous p. Why? Because at the point 2 the function value is same. Now your target is to find the values of 4 by pi alpha where alpha is pi by 2. So what is the meaning of the pi by 2? So it's a 3.14 that means it's a 1.5 something are there and 1.5 lies in this domain. So once it will be lies in here then you can simply consider of this solution. So what is the auxiliary equation of this? You can clearly say that auxiliary, sorry, it's a 4. Auxiliary equation is m square plus 4, 0. So what is the m? It's a plus minus 2 iota. So what is the complement solution is? C1 cos of 2 plus C2 sin of. This is the first method. I will tell you the another method also. This is the first method you can solve this. And since the right hand side is t, so how you can find the particular solution is? That's a simple d square plus 4 of t. It's a degree 1, so clearly say that it's my t by 4 are the answer. Otherwise, you can take like of this. It's a d square by 4 minus 1 of t. So, if you expand them and you can take this, so this part becomes the derivative 0. It's only t by 4. So, what is the solution of this differential equation in this interval is c1 cos of 2 plus c2 sin of 2 plus t by 4. Now that's over. Now what is given to you? You have to find y of 0 is 0. So once y of 0 is 0, so c1 will be 0. Second is y dash of 0 is 0. So this part will be 0. So what is the y dash is at 0? It's a c2. It will be the cos. So it's a 2 times of cos 0 is 1 plus 1 by 4 is 0. c2 is my minus 1 by 8. So I can substitute here. What is the y2 is a t by 4 minus here. Find the value at pi by 2. Once it's a pi by 2, this part will be 0. So what is the value of the pi by 2? It's a pi over 8. Now your target is this value is given to you alpha. So what is a 4 upon pi? So it can be multiplied by 4 over pi, 4 over pi. So 4 over pi. So you can cancel out. It's a 0.5 is the right answer. This is the first method. Second method is you can start with this using the Laplace transformation. So once you take the Laplace transformation, it will be S square plus 4 Laplace of the y. Uh, on the right hand side, it is a unit step function. You can write the unit step function as a t h of 0 plus 2 minus t h of t minus 2 and 2 times h at infinity. So clearly say that this will be 0. Now at the pi by 2, this part will be 0. So only function will be here again as of this one. Look about the another one. So what is given to you? If phi and psi are the two Li solution of this homogeneous differential equation. Alpha and beta are the two real numbers such that alpha is less than of the beta and phi that is one solution at alpha is 0 and beta is 0 and phi of alpha is non-zero for all x. So what is the meaning of that? It means the graph it could be like of this because there is no zero in between them or it could be like of this because there is no zero in between them. Then consider the following statement p and q and so on. Firstly it's a phi, it's a derivative. So if I consider the first graph which is written in this new, uh, above part, this part what is the meaning of that? What is the derivative at this point for this? Phi dash of alpha which is a positive because it's increasing and here it's a decreasing 
so the phi dash of beta is less than zero so what is the meaning of that what is the product product is less than zero but here is a greater than zero so this statement is false so this option cancel out this option cancel out. if you look about the denominator part what will happen in if you look about this graph then the phi dash of alpha is less than zero and at this point phi dash of beta is greater than zero again you can see the product will be less than zero so clearly say that first option is cancel out now in this case they, they are talking about the phi of x and psi of x so what is the meaning of that now how you can talk about the psi of x your target is to think here so do you remember any of the theorem which relate to them yes this is called as the sturm separation theorem this is a beautiful result which is related to this result what is the sturm separation theorem is if you have the two linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous differential equation and phi alpha and beta are the two successive remember the word is successive then there exists one x such that y2 is zero if you compare them y1 is my phi y2 is my psi and alpha and beta are the successive root because you can see one is alpha one is beta and due to this is non zero there is no root in between them it means these are my successive root once this is a successive root it means there exists one x so that psi of x is my zero according to this result so once psi of x is zero what is that product will be zero but it is a non zero so the first statement is false second statement is false so the right answer is both p and q are my false state look at the another one so which which of the following function is here alpha and beta and that's a very simple question so firstly you have to think about that which function you can think about that whose derivative is same as that of here definitely is exponential part because if you take the exponential part it will be here or i can substitute x dash here so it will be y double dash is my y so what is meaning of that y double dash minus y is zero so auxiliary equation is m square minus one zero m is plus minus one so y is my c1 e raised to power t c2 e raised to power minus of t second is now you can take here that is a derivative c1 e raised to power t minus of this this is clear now we have to apply this condition x of 0 is alpha what is x of 0 is c1 minus c2 x y of 0 is my beta c1 plus c2 fine now if you look about these clearly options are there you can see as t approaches infinity in all these cases your target is to check whether it's a zero or not if you look about that when you take t as a infinity this part will goes to the infinity always so it means the c1 must be zero c1 must be zero otherwise it, the none of the option will satisfy it means this option will becomes my c2 e raised power minus of t x is my here fine now once you are identified these two conditions now the solution will be very easy so what are the solutions are there now you can take c1 will be zero fine so now if look at the first option if alpha is one c2 will be my minus one if beta is my minus one that that's over if c2 will be minus one so if if you take here c2 is there then what is the mode of this this is my mode so what will happen of this as t this will goes to the zero this will goes to the zero the sum will be zero so the first option is the correct one look about the second one if alpha and beta both are one if alpha and beta both are one then c2 will be either the plus one or the minus one so it means this case is not possible if alpha is my 1.05 beta is my minus one again there are the two values of the c1 c2 again this case is not possible if alpha is one beta is my 1.01 again there are the two different value of the c2 that is again not possible so the right answer is only a is my correct option so remember this is a simple shortcut tricks we was c1 always be a zero okay look about this another example so what is that this is the od differential equation given okay and are the roots of the indices equations so remember whenever you are talking about the indices equation the coefficient of the y double dash need to be one so i can find this 
firstly pair as of this ln of x y dash plus y over 4 ln of x fine now it has a regular singular point at x is equal to 1 clearly says that x is equal to 1 is my singular point then you have to find the root of the equation that's a very simple target so this is the simple formula i can tell you p of r plus q is equal to 0 what is my p what is my p is limit x approaches 1 because 1 is a regular singular point similarly q is x approaches 1 x minus 1 of say p dash this is the coefficient so i can consider coefficient of the y dash is my 3 over 4 ln x similarly for the q it is x minus 1 whole square coefficient of the y 1 over 4 ln x is there now you can find that it's an infinite it's a 0 by 0 form so you can apply the allopator rule this is a 1 3 over 4 1 over x so as x approaches 1 it goes to the 3 by 4 so i can substitute here plus 3 over 4 r plus q so you can see here again it's a 0 by 0 form so you can take the allopator rule divided by 4 times 1 over x so as x approaches 1 this will goes to the 0 so this is my g so now this is the quadratic equation you can see r square minus r of fear so what is the answer of this r will be 0 r will be 1 by 4 so 1 is my r1 second is r2 you can subtract substitute here right answer is my 1 by 4 is the correct answer of this problem so this is the way you can solve these differential equations in a very simple manner. We will see the next lecture on the partial differential equations. Till then you can simply follow my playlist Gurg Gate Mathematics channel name Dr. Harish Gurg. I hope you can like, share and comment my this channel and this video with your friends. Please share this video with your friends. Thank you very much. Happy learning.